Hi, welcome to Google Training. Today we're going to look at how to write an email. So we can start by clicking over here in the big red compose button and it'll actually make a pop up over here where we can write our email. This is a really cool feature because what it allows you to do is to look at all the other emails you've got and to refer to them or whatever you need to do and your email will stay over here. Okay, we have a look at each bit of the windows here and I'm going to explain what each of those mean. So, firstly the to field. What that allows you to do is to uh, send your email to a number of people. You can start typing here and you can see the emails will start popping up. This is Google's autocomplete feature. You need to be careful who you're sending it to because as you can see there are actually two of me and there are two of uh, a variety of people. So you need to make sure you have the right one. Uh, if you want to send your email to more than one person, all you need to do is to add a comma at the end of the email. So as I press comma here, it will complete. Once I see this box, I know I can start typing another email. Over here I have the CC field. If I click on CC, um, I'm able to put in people here. CC basically stands for carbon copy. And what it does, it sends a copy of an email to someone else. Now, obviously I can do that by putting their name here as well. Um, the reason we would use a CC would be to address it to someone, uh, sorry, send it to someone without it being addressed to them. So, for instance, I might send an email to to a teacher and I might CC my coordinator about that. Um, it's something they need to know, but not necessarily something they they need to do anything about. So that's the purpose of a CC. The BCC stands for blind carbon copy, and it does exactly the same thing as a CC, but it doesn't show people who's been copied into it. So I might use a BCC field to send an email to a stack of parents, where I don't necessarily want the parents to see the names of the other parents, or students for that matter as well. Um, over here I put the subject. You need to make sure to keep your subject really descriptive to encourage people to read it. As you can see over here, I have quite a large number of unread emails because I can see from the email straight away whether I need to actually read it or not from the subject. So if you make a really descriptive subject, then it enables people to read their emails properly because they can see at a glance whether they actually need to read it, whether it applies to them or not. This next window down here, this is the body. So you would start the email with a greeting. Uh, hi works really well, uh, depends on who you're talking to, what you want to say. Then you would write the text of the email. Uh, this email is to... whatever. So you'd actually write what you actually want to ask in the email. And then after that, you would then uh, end with a, a, a greeting as well. So, uh, thanks, you're sincerely, all of these work fine. Okay, at the end here, I've also got a um, email signature, okay, with my name, my role, and the school that I'm at. Okay, that automatically comes in. You can set the email signature through settings over here, okay, so you can have that automatically pop up as well, okay, or you can just put your own in. Down here, we've got the big blue send button that obviously sends your email. Uh, I have formatting options so I can change things like the font and the size and so on, uh, bold, italics, uh, numbered list, centering. I can attach files here using the clip button and that will then have a look at my desktop at the moment to work out where I want to go. I can use all the other things here as well. Um, I also have my Google Drive so I can insert files using Google Drive and this will automatically share the files with the person as well. I can insert photos, insert a link to a website using this button, insert emoticons, smiley faces, and sad faces, and so on. I can insert invitations to events on Google Calendar. Um, I can also discard the draft because, as you remember, uh, any time I start writing an email, that will be saved in my drafts until I send it. If I don't actually want to to keep this, if I find it's a pretty useless one, then I can discard it here. Okay, and this gives me more options that I can have here as well. Alright, thank you for uh, watching Google Training.